Episode number 13, Cappy's Cage Podcast. Thanks for listening. What's on my mind today and a lot recently, because I've been saying it a lot to players and coaches and whoever I'm running across in my teachings and training, and is that I believe, I believe that you can learn your way to the top especially in the batter's box, um, as a hitter, you know, I want young hitters to understand that you can learn your way to the top. And that key word is, is learn. And, you know, to do that, you have to be surrounded by good people that you can learn from and train and understand that it's going to be a lot of your own self-awareness and work ethic and ability to adjust and ability to allow your ego to take in what you need and learn what you need and decipher what you don't need. Again, uh, you know, I'm always preaching about experimentation because that's where you're really going to, you know, discard what's not going to work for you and then accept and take in what is going to work for you because the reality is what works for some doesn't work for others and vice versa and you know a a, a hitter needs to, to know that and understand that and teachers and trainers and coaches need to understand that there is no certain way and, and I've had some good conversations with some good baseball people recently where we talked about that the way is that there is no way. There is no particular certain way. And what I mean by that is, you know, that as a coach or a teacher or a trainer, you can't or you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're teaching an absolute certain cookie cutter approach or way of doing things. And again, I'm speaking of hitting. You know, a good teacher has to be flexible, understanding of the individual they're working with, and be more of someone who's going to tailor a workout or a lesson, or your teachings based on the individual in front of you. You know, so a lot of people are misunderstood or, or influenced in the wrong way as a young, uh, a young hitter that they're searching for this this magic way of doing things and um, I wish it was that easy it's not and you're definitely hurting your path to progression and development if you do believe in such a such a way as I describe you know going back to my point about the experimentation and 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 diving in with a teacher trainer that you respect who's good and who can help you and once you find that person and that person is helping you navigate those waters of experimentation and working with your physical qualities uh, which is another thing recently I've been studying and and paying attention to is you know, people's physical qualities, you know, how tall they are, how long they are, um, you know, or lack thereof. And basically their frame, you know, is very important too. And that's maybe for another discussion, but, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, who you're dealing with in the batter's box or who you're trying to teach or train or, again, from the perspective of a player, who you who you're learning from. You know, that person should be open to, you know, and know everything about 
you as a hitter and and a hitter should be aware of of that as well you know these cookie cutter approaches that we've talked about in the past and the one way to do things or the the my way or the highway type of teacher it's is not that's not a good way to start your relationship with somebody that you want to work and develop and learn from so that open mindedness that willingness to experiment to uh try things discard them embrace them move on and um retool and and adjust and and maintain and then do that again. And that's kind of the cycle of, of a hitter's career is you're always adjusting and um, you never really, and again, it's, it's just proven, it's just fact, right? Because no one, no one succeeds every single time. So, you know, the game never ends or the player development never should end. The learning should never stop. The adjustments should never stop. And you have to be willing to look at it like that. I think for a long-term career and um, uh, you know, in development and and to reach your goals as a hitter. So, back to my topic. Um, which was, of course. The topic of the um, podcast is um, you can learn your way to the top. So, sorry I got off track there for a second, but I'm watching TV, MLB Network, while I'm talking into my phone recording this. So, Jason Hayward won't start all weekend. He's healthy. Madden giving him a long break. Okay. Yeah, that's a whole different podcast as well. But, um, okay, so you can learn your way to the top for sure. Um, and why I say it like that is because I want to differentiate uh, what's done in a batter's box for a hitter, their approach, their execution of their swing and their approach at the plate. Uh, uh, I want to differentiate that with, you know, other sports and like, you know, you take basketball and football and, you know, where you have to be you know, at such a high level of speed, strength, quickness, athletic ability to, 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 to reach the highest levels in those sports. It's just a fact. It's just the reality of, of things, you know, you're, you're not going to be playing the NBA if you're five foot three and, you know, you're not going to play in the NFL if you can't, you know, move your body a certain speed and you're not strong enough and your dimensions aren't you know, big enough or, or whatnot, you know, and with baseball and with hitters in general. And, and when, when we really dive into what's being done in that batter's box, um, you know, it takes a different level of expertise to succeed. Not, so, not so much a physical, you know, demand on yourself, but more of, um, and it is, it's, it's hard to explain really, but whether you call it more of a thinking man's game or a mental, more of a stronger mental approach. Um, and again, I can't really describe it, but it's less of a physical demand, uh, on a, on an athlete in the batter's box to, to reach the successes that hitters do. And, and, um, which is a good thing for most of us because um, a lot of us aren't, you know, so extremely physically gifted in size, strength, speed, quickness, whatever. Um, you know, that stuff doesn't necessarily translate into being a really good hitter. And we see that it's proven, it's fact. It's all you got to do is watch baseball and follow baseball. And, you know, a lot of the guys up there now doing big things in the major leagues – um, at the plate offensively as hitters aren't these magically freak athletes gifted you know you know it's 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 really becoming overrated and don't get me wrong you know the the physicality and the training and you know I'm a huge fan of that and developing your body speed strength quickness all that stuff um is, is a big part of it. But what's happening now is 
it's 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 overrated because everybody wants to measure you in that stuff in the tangibles of speed strength quickness and um you're kind of rated as an amateur based on that stuff and it's it's really unfair because it's not based off of production you know you're not going to go to a showcase and get a chance you know and get 100 at bats right you're going to get some coaches batting practice and maybe a few live at bats so you're being judged on these measurables these physical traits that don't necessarily translate into peak production productivity long-term success for a baseball player so basically the flip side of that is this knack of being a good hitter this knack for timing this knack for discipline patience um, obviously vision and sight is important um, obviously hand-eye coordination balance and body control um, you know being able to control your emotions and deal with lack of confidence during stretches and dealing with the amount of failure and unsuccessful attempts that pile up. Um, so you see it is a lot of how the mind works and the mental perception of success and failure. Obviously, there are mechanical stuff and execution stuff that a hitter has to do to be successful, but not a lot of it really hinges on a super strength or speed or quickness or height or weight or amount of muscle in your body. Um, you know, there's been more than capable, you know, athletes that have tried to play baseball or pursue baseball that have failed, you know, and it has nothing to do with their, their physicality. Um, and that's the stuff, if you can, I'd really want to promote. I'm certainly promoting more of that now than ever with my teachings and my approach, my philosophies, and how I talk about things in the batter's box, is that we can learn our way to the top. We can progress by our approach, the way we think about things, our perception of what's happening in the batter's box. You know, it does, I, not to go on and preach about it, but you can always relate it to real life stuff too, is, you know, take something in your own life that you've perceived a certain way for so long, and then maybe you've, you know, changed your opinion about it because you've, you've actually tried it and you've experimented with it and you thought, wow, you know, I can't believe I thought that way about this thing. And now it's such a, maybe it's part of your life now and you've accepted it and it works for you. So base, essentially what you've done is you, you, you have a different perception. You're th literally thinking different about, you know, that thing, um, whether it's tangible or not or, you know, physical or not, you know, or an idea or whatever. You know, so perception is a big thing of just, just you know, what we're trying to accomplish in the batter's box and how we're going about this little matchup between pitcher and hitter you know, how you think about something, you know. Um, you know, just an example of something like that in my, my own life was like yoga where, you know, I was never really introduced to yoga until, until just recently, literally about a year ago. Um, and it's, it's I mean, not to sound, you know, whatever, stupid or anything, but it's, it's life changing. Um, the effects, uh, mentally, physically, awesome. You know, whoever is not on board with yoga is simply narrow minded and not willing to try new things or whatever. Um, yoga is awesome. All baseball players should do it. And um, and again, it's you know th most people uh, aren't perceiving that as something that th that, that can help them. Um, physically or mentally, and and they've kind of shunned it or pushed it aside and haven't embraced it. And then once you do, um, you know, bring it in and, and use it, it's such a great tool and resource. So, like, 
going back to what I'm talking about, about the difference of the physicality and then the mental side and, and how we can learn our way to the top in the batter's box is how we, um, how we think about things and how we perceive what we're doing up there is, is, is huge. And it doesn't have anything to do with mechanics. It's literally bending your mind to perceive something, um, differently. And, and when you open up those channels mentally, you, you can get more out of your production. You, I, I believe you can get more, more out of yourself. Um, and again, not getting too in too deep as, you know, I don't want to get in sound, um, you know, like too far out or whatever, but there, there's definitely something to that. And, um, and it's probably more, more realistic that you can relate it to something in your own life than you can with baseball. But what I want to do is relate it to a hitter's approach at the plate as well. Um, there's so many guys in the world, elite baseball players that struggle mightily, fail to make adjustments, fail to succeed, make it to the next level, fail to have success at certain levels. They have all the physical attributes you could ask for, um, and they don't progress. They don't learn. They don't get better. And I believe a lot of that has to do with the narrow-mindedness, the uh, unwillingness to experiment, the unwillingness to learn. Um, I think the ego gets in the way a lot. And and that is just a recipe for disaster and the fact that you're going to literally spin your wheels and you're not going to progress. You, everybody's going to pass you up, you, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I see, I see it all the time and, and not, you know, not to name names, but there's a long list of guys that are doing that right now. And, um, I believe it's, 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 it's self-inflicted actually. Um, and some of it might be bad advice from people around them. They're not surrounding themselves with the right resources, but, um, or they're just too naive and not in the know enough to, uh, to know what's good for them and, and what's bad for them. But at the end of the day, they're not, uh, they're not thinking about things in the right manner. And you have to be able to bend your mind a little bit and open up to different ideas and different ways and what's going to work best for you and what you can discard and what you can embrace. And, um, and I think that's the journey that a lot of hitters are on. It's such a difficult thing to do. It's so hard, man. It is so difficult in the ups and downs and the emotional um, aspect of it and the confidence and, and everything else that it matters, but it doesn't, if you know what I mean, right? It matters because it affects us negatively. It matters if you allow it to affect you negatively because it's going to matter on your production. Um, so yeah, learn your way to the top. I believe you can do that with the right resources around you. And I know I've talked a, a lot about it in the past and I'm very passionate about an individual player having a mentor, a teacher, a trainer, somebody that they can lean on, um, not hand over everything to them, you know, not hand over all the controls necessarily, um, but someone that's going to guide you and be able to expand your mind and you're going to be able to uh, communicate with this person. Um, this person is going to tap into certain things that maybe others couldn't do or you couldn't do on your own, help you think about things in a different light, in a different manner, ultimately accumulating in a level of a success or bringing out the best in you, right? A lot of times we need someone else to do that. It's hard for you, we, us to do it ourselves. Um, and, and simply based on we don't have the experience um, and we don't have the understanding or the knowledge to do so. And um, so when I say that you can learn your way to the top in the batter's box as a hitter, 
you know, obviously easier said than done, but literally easier if you can learn and apply and, 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 and accept that guidance and you're going to do it mostly on yourself, right? Because it's you. And the hardest thing to do is to produce and execute as a player, as a hitter, right? We've talked about that before, but, um, but I think that variable, that X factor, is the willingness from the player to learn and break it down and understand every aspect and, and then also being able to surround themselves with that person that, that can help them, you know, that can communicate, that can break barriers, that can um, break old ways of thinking, you know, that's just the way, that's just the way of the world right now, you know, in a lot of things, let alone athletics and, and baseball in general and hitting. But um, if you're not progressing, you're not moving forward, you're not thinking about things in a different light, um, you know, that's just, that's just, that's just, there's such a big commitment to, to be good, you know, don't just say you want to be good. Do something about it. But mainly, my point is um, for the podcast. You know, learn your. You can learn your way to the top. Is you know, there's a lot of guys out there playing right now that have all the physical ability, and um, and they might be struggling greatly. I mean, I certainly was one of those at at certain points in my professional career. So I can definitely relate, and that's why I'm passionate about topics like this right now. But there's a lot of people that are, you know, have all the physical tools that aren't getting it done right now, and they're not producing offensively at the plate, and and there's there's a reason for that, you know, and um, it's because you're trying to make it a physical thing, and it's less of a physical thing, more of a mental thing. It's more of a educational learning thing, it or lack thereof. Um, it's more of a being able to go with the flow and adjust uh, on the fly and always be adjusting, as I say, it's it's more of that um, than it is trying to, you know, just f- brute force your way f- to the next level and, you know, um, and just kind of force your way physically to the next level that it just it doesn't happen. It happens, you know, it can happen in little league, you know, but it can't happen at the higher levels when, when everybody's more on a physical level playing field. Right. Um, you know, so th- there is that, um, there is that about, about hitting and producing at the plate in the batter's box. So highly promote, you know, learning, obviously, uh, but it's just such an underrated thing. I see it every day when I work with people. I, I, I you know, um, the, the last thing I'll say is just recently I was working with somebody who's an elite, elite, elite athlete, like college football player, but focusing on, you know, baseball now and trying to get to the next level. And, um, and what we were talking about, the first thing I said was we were in the cage and I pointed at the batter's box and I said, see that batter's box. I said, if you don't make it right, if you don't go on and play professionally and make it to the highest level and have a long successful career, if, if that doesn't happen and you don't make it, It'll be because of what you do in that batter's box. It won't be because of your size, strength, arm strength, speed. You know, um, it won't be because of some physical um, problem. And um, a lot of a lot of players now fall into that category. And I want them to understand that that batter's box is literally life or death for your baseball career, for your baseball career, almost always, right? Because what's happening now is we're in a culture where everybody's training and lifting weights and running and faster and bigger and stronger. Everybody's like that now, 
once you get to the higher levels, even in high school, everybody's got a good body and strong and this and that, right? So that's the culture. But that's also the easy part because anybody can do that. Anybody can hit the weight room. Anybody can hit the track and work on their speed. And, and, that, and again, not to, not, to, um, not to downplay that because we need that. That needs to be a part of the process. But it doesn't need to be the central focus. The batter's box, the approach, the execution of the swing – you know, pitch recognition, pitch selection, balanced body control, um, you know, the coordination, the barrel control, all that stuff that we talk about takes no um, extraordinary amount of speed, strength, or size, or whatever that we can achieve in a, a weight room or, or whatever. Um, and that's what I want more people to understand, especially hitters looking for answers, looking for better success. You know, and, that, and, and, and again, in, in my case, it was that y y I needed to look further. I needed to have my mind bended about approach and how my, what I'm thinking and what I'm trying to accomplish up there because it is a process. Um, and it is something you have to work extremely hard on. And it is much harder than just going and working on your strength and speed and agility, okay? It's so much harder to get your hands dirty and learn um, the things you need to learn about being a good hitter and a productive hitter. Uh, and, and you can learn that. You can learn it. You don't have to, you know, run it or lift it, right, or sweat it. <laughs> you, you, you simply learn it. It's, it's more along the lines of reading a book or educating yourself with a teacher. You know, that production we can get in the batter's box. So that should comfort some people because some people might be feeling that, oh, I'm not going to be tall enough or I'm not going to be strong enough or fast enough to play in college or pro or whatever. And that's not the case. We see it all. There's examples on every team in the major leagues um, in every lineup in the major leagues, and it's becoming more and more evident um, with some of these players that they figured it out in the batter's box, and that's why they're having success. They didn't figure it out in the weight room, okay? And, um, again, not to downplay that because there's, a, there's definitely importance in, in, in the physicality of training as a baseball player, and I'm a big believer in that as well. But today's conversation was more on – you can learn your way to the top and what I mean by that. So I'm sticking to it. That's all I got. Episode 13, learn your way to the top in the batter's box. All right, I'll be back with some good stuff maybe next week, maybe sooner or later. We'll see. Later. Thank you. Cappy's Cage Podcast.